What's up YouTube, Dal here from Zephyr War Games, and today I am bringing you a video of cards that you might need if you are planning to build the Ice Barriers, which are due out this week, technically in two days from the day of the release of this video. With that out of the way, quite straightforward and simple, please smash that like button, hit that notification bell and subscribe so you do not miss out on any more upcoming content and news releases alongside supporting videos such as this one. So, on to today's video, what I am basically going to bring, bring to you is a list of cards that are not contained within the Ice Barrier Structure Decks due out on Thursday, but are relatively cheap and cards that you are going to need to pick up. I will also go through the average prices of each of these cards as well, so you know what you're getting yourself into. But keep in mind, we will be bringing you a profile coming out on Thursday alongside an opening as well, and we'll show you the combos that me, Donald, and Joe have been working on, which actually really get this deck going. And surprisingly enough, you can actually end with your decent combo, going with two Totally Awesomes, plus the ability of going into either a Ultrish, Nutrish, or a Croco Dragon, um, depending on where you want to take it, and a um, Adamantzapetar Resin Dragite as well. So, let's start with the first card on the list. Now, the first card pretty much is the most important one to get for the main deck, in my opinion, and that is, of course, Swap Frog. Swap Frog, strangely enough, didn't come in the deck, but it comes with Dupe and Ronin. So, it's kind of like, here, we want you to play Toads, but we're not going to give you the core card. Now, luckily, Ronin did get reprinted, uh, not Ronin, sorry, du uh, Swap, <laughs> get there eventually, did get reprinted in Duvo, so it's only about a pound for an ultra rare. It's come ultra common and ulti, I believe, at current, so you should be able to pick this up very, very cheap and easily, and only at one pound a card, definitely worth getting and investing in. The next one is really down to personal preference, or well, most of the cards from this point on are down to personal preference in regards to the route you wish to take the deck. Now, in my opinion, the frogs are pretty much the best engine for the deck to help utilize it a little bit more. Uh, and pretty much as long as you have an extender plus um, a specific ice barrier and swap frog and the rest of your hand is just discardable water monsters, you go full combo. So it's very consistent to do the full combo. It just needs a lot to do it. So this one is Marincez Seahorse. Now, of course, it's got a reprint in Mega Tins 2019. Again, a very cheap card, about a pound on a super rare, three pound on an ultra rare. But the idea behind this is this is just basically a free summon later on in the combo. Not as high important as Swap Frog, but it's still a very, very good card to keep your eyes on if you really like the Marincez art type and you want to go down that route and use the Marincez as a nice little engine. We're then going to move into other little cards. So you've got um, the Deep Sea Diva Minstrel alongside stuff like White Stingray. Uh, and of course, the other one that was a brand new card that came out in Blazing Vortex. Now, the idea behind all these cards is they're just free extenders. But more so for this guitar card is it's actually a card that comes off the back of Deep Sea Diva. And what that allows you to do is it allows you to turn Deep Sea Diva into a level 4. And that then allows you to go into the Prima Donna uh, Synchro that we'll get onto in a little bit later on. The other behind this as well is Deep Sea Diva is again one of them cards that you want to use as your normal summon. Now in the particular build that we're going to be showing you on Thursday, we're actually going to focus more on Ice Barriers with Swap Frog. Um, but you can kind of utilise the Ice Barrier card to go into Deep Sea Diva. Now the idea behind this, and the one thing I really dislike about this is the whole engine actually gives your opponent another card in the hand. Um, but if you're going to do that, then the, the route of play with this particular combo will be making cards that allow you to take cards away from your opponent's hand. So you pretty much go for a hand loop. But the idea behind the Deep Sea Diva is you normally summon this, it brings out the uh, Duo Guitar. Duo Guitar turns Deep Sea Diva into a level 4. You then use Deep Sea Diva and the guitars and you make the Prima Donna. The Prima Donna will allow you to spin one of your opponent's banished cards back to the hand that the guitars has already banished and allow you to special summon the Ice Barrier Monster from your deck. And then from that point on you discard a card, you do full ba um, barrier statue, uh, Ice Barrier combo from that point. Uh, and then moving further forward you do have the ability to shuffle back one of your banished cards should you get to that point or shuffle back one of your opponent's cards depending on how important it is. Uh, but the one thing that I really don't like about the engine is just how much advantage you give your opponent. It's a good combo. Um, but it does allow your opponent to get a bit of advantage and shuffle the deck up. The final card that I saw someone very interested in playing is the um, Familiar Possessed Water. And the idea behind this is you do actually have water spell casters that are part of the Ice Barrier deck. And the idea behind this is you'll special summon this card out of the deck. And then once it leaves the field, you'll be able to search out an advanced art, uh, a water art, which basically allows you to rip one for your opponent's hand. So it's an interesting little tech, you do get a draw off it, both play, um, and your opponent discards a card, but again, th this is only going down that Deep Sea Diva direct route of, okay, I'm going to give you stuff in your hand, but I'm going to take it away as well, just to help me extend my combos and consistency a little bit further. 
Uh, speaking of the Deep Sea Diva, we do have Deep Sea Area. Now, all of the cards I mentioned before this are all commons. The Deep Sea Diva is like a pound as a super rare, so all of these are like 10p cards you can pick up very, very easily. Now, the Deep Sea Area is about a pound card. It's a secret rare, but the idea behind this is you will banish a water monster in your graveyard and search out your Deep Sea Diva. So it just makes that a little bit more consistent. It's just something that you need to be aware of if you want to go down this particular route. We'll then take a look at Moray of Greed. Now, Moray of Greed is probably the best draw card for a deck like this because the way it works is it's technically like an upstart in the sense that it just replaces itself. It just deck fins itself. Um, it's not a hard once per turn, which is great, but it does require you to have three specific water monsters in your hand. So you have to have three water monsters. Uh, sorry, two water monsters. You put them back into your deck and then you draw three cards. So it can sometimes be a blessing, but it can also be a curse as well if you're putting back bricks and draw the same bricks. So... It's a little bit of an iffy card, but it is quite important for this particular deck because you do need a bit of draw power. So one or two of these worked perfectly fine. Uh, Super Rare from OTS Pack, like a good few years ago, is about £5 a copy. But you can actually pick up the commons for about £2 each. So a playset for about 5 is pretty much what you're going to be looking for. We've then got the Rage of Karyushin. Now this card... What I love about this is it basically allows you to add a Torrential Tribute. So it combos off with Torrential Tribute itself, and they're two cards you want to be picking up. Now, the Rage of uh, Karyushin was a promo as an ultra rare at a pound, but it's also come as a common and so has Torrential Tribute. So again, you're looking at about 10p each on those. And the idea is that when you buy, and we'll get to it later, a little bit more in the extra deck, uh, your most expensive card, you're pretty much going to be saying to the seller, do you mind chucking in these commons you've probably got lying around for 10p each, or just chuck them in for free. So you're going to get your money back or your money's value back that route. But the Rage of Karyushin basically allows you to turn Torrential Tribute into a one-sided Raigeki during your opponent's turn because you search out Torrential Tribute, you set it, you trigger Torrential Tribute, and then if your Water Monster or Monsters would be destroyed by card effects, you banish uh, Rage of Karyushin, and that allows you to protect your monsters. So you basically go, okay, I'm going to Raigeki your board, and I'm not going to lose anything. So some nice little tech um, that Joe brought up, and I thought it was worth putting in. We've already gone over the Spiritual Art. So then the last two cards is Marisess Wave. Now, throughout the combo, the, the only issue with the Marincess Wave is there's no way of searching it unless you go heavy Marincess. Um, but it's such a good card is that throughout the combo, and again, you'll see in the profile later on, um, you're going to end the board on a Link 4 Marincess, which means you can actually drop this card from your hand, and it protects all of your monsters. So your board is technically going to end on a Halifirebrax, plus two Totally Awesomes, plus the Link 4 Marincess, which is allowing you to banish a card and draw a card, and you've got the Halley Firebrex, which is going to trigger to allow you to bring out a Synchro monster, which can then be used to Synchro summon during your opponent's turn into either a Crocosaur, can go from a Coral Dragon into a Dragonite, which gives you a draw and a negate. And if you're able to protect all of your monsters using Marincess Wave, you're on the next level of protection. A very, very good card. Again, got a nice reprint. It sits around 50p to a pound. Again, it's one of the cards that you'll probably say to someone, look, I'll buy a bulk off you. Do you want to add them in or how do you want to do it? The final tech card for the Mader is White Howling. Now, I really like this card when it first came out, and the idea is that what you do is you target one of your opponent's spells in their graveyard and you banish it, and for the rest of this turn, you negate all spell effects on your opponent's side of the field. Again, it got reprinted in the Megatins 19 as a rare, so you're looking at anywhere between 10 to 50p. Relatively cheap and easy to pick up, and it's just one of them nice side deck cards that you can put into your deck as a very, very good out and a counter to anything that is relying heavily on spells. The other good thing about this as well is if your opponent was to play Virtual World, for example, and send the um, Chuchi or the, the Quinlong to search, you can banish the Quinlong before they even get a chance to use it, and then you're negating all the other effects from that point on. So if they were to try and get into the Quinlong uh, city, they're not going to be able to use that, they're not going to be able to resolve that, and it really puts them in a tough situation because if they can't then get their trap on the board, then they're not going to be able to go much further. It does require you to control a water monster, um, but it does give you a very, very nice blanket negate on spells, so it can be used against generic art types and generic matches as well. Now we're moving on to the extra. Again, all of these cards in the main deck, the most expensive one is like Deep Sea Diva around a pound, and so is, of course, Swap Frog, and they're two of the best routes you would go for. Me, personally, I'd only choose to go for one or the other. I've gone more down the Swap route rather than the Deep Sea route because it re requires less outside influence so it means that like, if I go with a deep sea route I've got to get the guitars I've got to get a deep sea area and like I said I don't like giving my opponent that additional um, resource if I don't have to. So moving on to the extra deck or, or pretty much side deck card first off uh, we've got the Marincess uh, Battle Arena or the Marincess Field Spell. Now the reason this is more so good or just as a little spicy tech that uh, Donald mentioned is you can adapt your levels of your water monsters so it means you can actually access your synchros a little bit easier because you can either uh, increase their levels or decrease their levels so it's just a little start tech that lets you play around with it and you can stack the top of your deck so you get the draw that you need for the next turn it's probably going to be a little bit better for the grind game but you also want to make sure the one thing that Ice Barrier struggled to do 
believe it or not, is allow them to get into their Trish, to allow them to get into the old Trish and the new Trish a little bit more consistently. Uh, and that's where you need to start taking advantage of the other kind of cards and engines in the deck, like Cali Firebrax, that allow you to get to that point. So for the extra deck, we're looking at Desert Locust. Now, Desert Locust is a card that comes off of the back of Halley Firebrax, and it makes the turn player discard a card. So this is part towards the hand loop engine or the hand loop route. So if you've gone through the um, familiar possessed level 5 water and you've ripped from your opponent's hand that way, and then you're going to rip from your opponent's hand using the Spirit Art, and then you're going to rip from your opponent's hand using the Desert Locust, you've already taken three cards away from them, and you might as well put in a Mooning Glacier in this deck as well, and rip two more so they're only going to be playing with one card. That's the hand loot version. I'm not a big fan of it, but it is a card you want to keep your eye on. It, again, it's only like a 10p common. You then look at Chris Strong Quandrax. Now, personally, I'm going for Riser Dragon over Quandrax, but the one thing that Quandrax does have is it is a level 4. It is a water as well, so it can be used for XYZ material should you want to. But again, cards like this and some of the other synchros I'm going to show you in a minute are going to be coming off the back of Chris Strong Halley Firebrax, which then means you're going to be using their effects as quick effects to synchro summon using your board or your monsters. So it depends on what monsters you're leaving on your board at the end of your plays and what synchros you want to plan to go into. Which is why I think Rise of Dragon is a little bit better because you can abuse his level uh, and kind of make it range wherever you need it to be to get the right monsters that you need. Uh, we then look at Deep Sea Prima Donna. Now again, this was part of the Deep Sea um, Diva kind of combo route. And the idea behind this is, yes, you target one of your opponent's banished cards, you add it back to the hand and then you get to special summon a level 4 from the deck, which is going to be the Ice Barrier, which is basically discard and special summon an Ice Barrier tuner from the deck. Synergy! Um, if it does leave the field annoyingly, you target one banished card and shuffle it back into the deck. So if it was like target a banished card and add it to the hand, then I suppose you can kind of get away with giving yourself more resource. And because it is just sent, you can trigger it just by linking it off. It is a tuner and it is a level 7, so it does have further synergy with the deck uh, and can actually help you get into some of your bigger monsters later on. But to me, it's just not worth hugely investing in unless you're going down that deep sea route. Uh, and this card is specifically sitting at around a pound as well as an ultra rare from Eternity Code. We then move into Marincess um, Bubble Reef. Now, the reason we've gone into this one is it's probably the best generic link for Water Monster. So throughout the combo as you play it, you will lock yourself into the waters eventually. Uh, and the one good thing about this card is, yes, you do burn through your entire hand because you're using it as discard fodder, but she will allow you to banish a Water Monster during the standby phase, so including yours and your opponent's, to draw an additional card. Now, if you're comboing this off with Toads, what that does allow you to do is it does allow you to chain block your Toads so that they're not going to get hit with Ash Blossom as well. But you can go Toad as Chain Link 1, you can go Bubble Reef as Chain Link 2. And I'm just imagine if you draw off of your Bubble Reef, the Marincess Wave, and you're kind of like, I'm just protected for this turn. Like, my opponent's not stopping my Toads, my um, Needle Firebar, my Halley Firebrax, or my Dragite, Coral Dragon, anything. I'm going to be able to draw cards and replenish my hand. Again, super rare from Eternity Code, you can probably pick this up for 50p. If you're buying stuff all a lot from one person, again, you can probably easily ask and say, do you want to just chuck it in or do you want to do it for a cheap bargain? Uh, then, of course, we've got Rise of Dragon. Now, like I said, with Rise of Dragon, it comes off the back of Halley Firebrax using its effect during its uh, your opponent's turn. And what that allows you to do is it allows you to adapt its level by sending a monster from your deck to the graveyard and then reduce its level by said level. Now, keep in mind that if you've used Totally Awesome's effect at the start of your turn, you've already got a level 2 monster on the board. So what this allows you to do is it allows you to turn Rise of Dragon into a level 4, which then means you can go into Coral Dragon if you wanted to, or you can pretty much adapt it from there. So you have the ability, without even changing Rise of Dragon's level, to go into a level 9 Crocosaur and give you an additional draw. So technically, if you do it right, you're going to be drawing two cards because you get one off of Crocosaur, you get one off of uh, the Bubble Reef. You can adapt its level by one so that you turn it into a six and then you use the Duke Frog and go into a level eight, which is a Dragite. You can drop it by two to go into a level seven, so on and so forth. So you've got a lot of different routes from this point. So what you can actually do is you can do Riser to use as a Foolish Burial, then use Riser plus Duke to go into the Desert Locust to then rip one from your opponent's hand. And then because Desert Locust can then trigger his effect to Synchro Summon immediately, you can then use that plus any other monster to go into another Synchro, which can be Dragite or another monster from that point. Speaking of cards like this, you can also look at cards like Formula Synchron that guarantee you a draw when it's summoned, and you've also got the TG Hyper Librarian as another option, um, just to kind of mess around with tuners that are level 5s that are synchros that also give you the ability to pretty much instantly synchro summon from that point. It just depends on what you're trying to go for. Now, if you really, really, really wanted to try it, you could go something like Formula Synchron, draw one card, synchro that with a Dupe Frog and something else to get you into a Riser Dragon, or climb up into a Coral Dragon, 
Uh, as long as you have something that can then quick effect to synchro, you can then move that a little bit further on as well. Quick effect, synchro, go up one more. Eventually you get into a Crocodragon, Dragon, so you're drawing another card. Um, if you're able to pretty much trigger two effects, if you're able to go Formula Synchron and some find, somehow find a way into Coral Dragon and the ability to synchro some as well, you'll draw another card off of that. Then you go into Coral Dra uh, Crocosaur, draw another card off of that. And then you're going to go into your Bubble Race. You've technically drawn four cards and replenished your hand before everything you got back round to your turn. Wise Dragon is sitting at a surprisingly low one to two pound, definitely worth picking up in my opinion. Speak of the Devil, we do have Coral Dragon again as about a pound card coming out of Dual Overload Boxes or Dual Devastator. Uh, again, very cheap and easy to pick up and most, if not all, Synchro decks should be owning a Coral Dragon right now. We've then got Marisus, uh Coral. Now, the, uh, but the reason behind Coral is Coral is a nice little extender because what it can do is it can bring back any of your Swap Frogs from the graveyard. Swap Frog can then trigger. It can bring back any of your Marincess. It can be used to special summon Seahorse to a zone. It can be used to use two Water Monsters to bring another Water Monster back and then Link Climb even higher. Again, a very, very cheap card. Sits at about £2 as a super, £7 as a secret if you really want to go for the uh, rarity bumps on that. But it is just a utility card that can go into your extra deck alongside a card like uh, Miss Starboy. Uh, Miss Starboy is, of course, just a gen generic Link 2 monster that is going to boost all of your monsters up a nice little bunch. So it's a little bit harder for your opponent to just try and one-shot back over one of your monsters. Then we move into Adam Ancipator, uh, Resin Dragite. Now, of course, this is a level 8. It is a negator if you've got water monsters in the graveyard. That's what all Ice Barriers are, so you're going to be good to go off of that one. Uh, and it also allows you to kind of, if you wanted to, and you wanted to put a couple of rocks in here for lulls and trolls, you could use this effect to excavate and then spin cards back. But the idea is that during your opponent's turn, you're able to go into Rise of Dragon, or you can go into Quandri uh, sorry, Quandrax, or you can go into um, Formula Synchron. As long as you've got the right materials, you can make a Dragite, and Dragite is going to give you a draw, an additional plus, plus and a gate. So it's basically like their version of Savage Dragon. And the big difference is it's only about a £2 card. No, cheap, sweet, short, simple, easy. Uh, then we move on to White Whale Aura. Now, again, this is just an aggressive card that you can make during your opponent's turn. Uh, when you do make it, it'll destroy all of your opponent's face out attack position monsters. So again, it's just a nice little board wipe. Again, only sits at around two to three pounds, so it isn't something that's going to break the bank, but it is something that you could consider as a nice little spicy tech. Then we get down to the Crunch Monsters. Now, these are the monsters that you're probably going to want to get more times than not and are more important to the deck specifically. So starting off with Bahamut Shark. Bahamut Shark is a super rare that came out in the previous OTS pack. It's also a gold rare and a secret rare, so it depends on how deep your uh, pockets go. But if you just want to pick up the lowest rarity possible just for this deck and you only really need one, maybe two copies, you're looking at about £3, maybe a pair for five quid. We then move on to Totally Awesome that has technically had free prints in the game as far as I'm aware. Why hasn't it had an ulti yet? I do not know. But you've got the original secret rares that sit around seven to ten pounds. But you also have the reprinted uh, secret rares sitting at about five pounds, and you've got the reprinted gold rares from the gold set that sit at about three pounds for a technical rare. Um, you're going to probably want two of these guys. You're definitely going to want to try and pick up the pair for five pounds. They are about three pound each, and that's kind of where it sits. But this is the card that you're probably going to consistently make more times than not. Even if you don't use the frog engine, you still have the ability in the natural resource of the Ice Barriers to make this card through Bahamut Shark or just through making two level two Aquas and Overland. So definitely one of the first, if not the second card you go to, um, to get for this deck. Then increasing a little bit in cost, we are looking at the Crocosaur. The Crocosaur is just a generic level 9 that you can make during your opponent's turn, which gives you a draw. But also if you have hand advantage, you actually have the ability of quick effect to ditch Ditch two and pop cards. So some people forget about that because Crocosaur is usually just seen to go, oh, draw a card, overlay, VFD, GG. But in this deck, you can actually go, Crocosaur, draw a card, wait, 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 ditch two, pop card. And sometimes that could be more important, especially when you're already sitting on two totally awesomes, that if you don't want to go for a, a, a Dragite for a third negate, you can actually go for more of an interruption play in case your opponent's trying to just normal summon monsters or trigger your toads to lose them off the board and then uh, get advantage that way. Then we get on to probably, painfully, the most important card for your extra deck that is also the most expensive card, and that is, of course, Christian Halley Firebrax. Shocker. Now, both Ice Barriers, um, and if you wanted to go with a Deep Sea Diva route as well, they do pump out Synchros and Tuners like No Tomorrow. 
So Crucial and Holy Firebrax is just so important to the deck in general for all of what it utilizes. Especially when you get Fishball Launcher in the structure deck as well. That is a great card to be special summoning out of the deck to then use as material to make your Coral Anime and then bring it back later on to then go into your Bubble Reef. So it just allows you to extend further on. And you can easily get tuners out of the deck using of course Deep Sea Diva and of course using the Ice Barrier Spellcaster that's gonna special summon a tuner from the deck. So it does have a lot of synergy, it does have a lot of usage and it does kind of keep you going. It is sitting around £20 online, but again, if you're going up to someone or, or you're trying to order online or as a group or something like that from a trusted seller, you can say, look, I'm looking for a Hattie Firebrax, I'm looking for two Totally Awesomes, I'm looking for a Bahama Shark, I'm also looking for free swaps frogs. What's the deal you can do for me? Someone will probably go, I'll do you all of that for 30 quid. Nice, short, sweet, simple, done, banked, easy money. You then couple that with your free structure decks that you've bought, or maybe even two, depending on where you're going for, and you've only spent 54 quid and you've got a very, very good and powerful deck to use and abuse. And this is probably one of the best. I was like, when Ice Barriers first came out, I was like, nah, I'm not interested whatsoever. I was like, all right, okay, I'll look at them, I'll test them, I'll work with Donald, I'll work with Joe, we'll see where we can get them. And between all three of us, uh, we all put in little text, little touches, and we tested out a thing. Donald came out of a combo. The combo allowed you to use Trish during your opponent's turn, which is really cool. I was like, how can we take this up a level? And he was like, well, this is what you can do. So you can end your board on two Totally Awesomes at base minimum, and then off of the back of that, you're protected from the Biro as well because you get it on your fifth summon, and then you're able to have the ability to adapt the synchros you wish to make during your opponent's turn. So if you wanted to, you can make the new Trish and make your opponent set their cards and then Trish them, banish the three, or you can wait for your opponent to set cards and you go Trish, rip one from hand, rip one from grave, rip one from the field. Um, and it gives you a lot to play around with and it allows you to utilize the Ice Barrier Synchros, the Ice Barrier Monsters, and then of course gives you a meta edge, providing you with Omni Negates to protect all of your board building and protect your overall end board. So in my opinion, when you go out and when you buy your Structure Decks or before your Structure Decks, which is why this video comes out a little bit early, you go and get number one, get your Swap Frogs, that's for your starter deck. But off the back of your Swap Frogs, you need to make sure you then get your Christian Halley Firebrax, you then get your Totally Awesomes and your Bahamut Sharks. They are the four most important cards, in my opinion, that you're going to want to get for this deck. Everything else from that point on then comes down to the playstyle you want to go with and the route you want to take the deck with. Simple as that. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope it's given you a different look. I hope it's given you a different answer. And I hope it's kind of made you go, hmm, yeah, all right, I will pick up the Ice Barrier Structure Decks. Or I was already getting the Ice Barrier Structure Decks, but now I know the other cards I need to pick up so that they arrive in time for when my Structure Decks turn up on Thursday or when I go and buy the Structure Decks on Thursday, that I can build a deck and be ready for the weekend locals on Remote Duel. Synergy, it works, ladies and gentlemen. But for now, as absolutely always, guys, thank you so much for watching. I hope this has been helpful. Uh, smash that like button, hit that notification bell, subscribe so you do not miss out on any more upcoming content, news releases, news breaks, the whole nine yards. And until next time, guys, as absolutely always, stay safe and happy dueling.